Hi everyone, you've imported your transcript, you've got everything in vivo ready to go, and now it's time to start making codes. So this is for the analysis. If you're brand new to coding, this is an introduction of how to get started using in vivo to code your transcripts in a qualitative project. Okay, so you can see in this in vivo that I've got a transcript open. I used a publicly available podcast to make this transcript. It's a podcast about digital realities in rural school divisions in our province. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to code. I'm going to code this transcript, assuming that my research question is something like, what were the digital realities in rural schools in regards to technology in the pandemic or something like that. And I'm just gonna go through and show you how I would do it. So I'm just gonna go line by line through this transcript and I'm going to start creating what I think of as codes, but what InVivo calls nodes. And you can see down here, um, this is the circle where it says nodes. You, I'll just show you how to do it. So I'm gonna just start reading through. Um, this is the bottom of the transcript. Let's see, okay, we'll just start at a random place. So here we go. Let's get into some of the findings. Perfect. The first part is about realities. What did we do when we looked at what's happening in school divisions? One of the good things was that all school divisions had developed technology policy about how they were purchasing and how are they using technology. So I might highlight this and I might call this something about policy. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to left click on code and it will put a pop-up that says nodes. Now I don't have any nodes yet, so I need to go down and click new node, and then I'm going to call this policy. Now later on, you might wanna go back in and you might want to collapse some of your codes, you might wanna expand some of your codes. So for example, this quote here is about technology policy about both purchasing and using technology. So later on, depending what other codes I produce, I might want to split this into two different codes and we can do that at a later date. But for now, I'm just going through and trying to keep my codes as close to the original transcript as possible. Later on, I can combine, I can abstract out a level, etc. But for now, I'm keeping it as close as possible. So let's keep going. They were all in the process of purchasing hardware and software to support learning. I'm going to code that and I'm going to call that something about um, purchasing. Okay, they were all doing something about training teachers and staff and students to use technology. Okay, let's call that. Okay, I'm going to call that training. I want a new node here, training. Okay, mm -hmm. they had developed policy around the internet, online safety, and digital citizenship. Okay, so now we're talking about policy again. So here you'll notice I've already got a node called policy. I'm just going to click it and click OK. And then you'll be able to see that. I'm going to show you how I can see my nodes at a glance. I just click on nodes and you'll see so far I've got policy, purchasing and training. And you can, you know, I can move these around if I want to. And you can see this is all one source. What that means is that I'm only working from one transcript, but in a typical qualitative research project, you might be working with interviews, you might be working with focus groups, you might have a few different sources of your information, you might have imported data that was from other sources as well. And so uh, if you have multiple sources with the same codes, you'll see them under sources. And then references is simply the number of times I've highlighted and tagged that as policy. So, so far I've got two things to do with policy. So you can see two references there. I'm going to just open coding stripes. And so you'll see it open here in different colors. And this makes sense because in the days before in vivo, what you would do is you would print out all of your transcripts and you would gather as many highlighters in different colors that you, that you could possibly find. And you would go through line by line and highlight in different colors for different codes. And then once you were done, you would cut them all out and you would arrange them on a big table to see, okay, these are all the things that people said that related to policy and you can see them at a glance. And so this is what it's allowing you to do just in a, in a digital version. So I'm gonna keep going a little bit so you can see, um, I'll continue so that until I've got a few different nodes here that uh, we can then play around with. So. 
Let's see, where were we? They had developed policy around the internet. They were using curriculum and technology curriculum differently. Okay, so let's highlight that. Um, now, depending on our research question, maybe we might want to code this as differences. Um, but because my research question is to do with how they were using technology during the pandemic, I'm just going to call this curriculum or tech curriculum. And let's continue. Uh, we found there are philosophical differences. You can see it in the policies. Again, that's something to do with policies. So let's just highlight that, call that policy, how the purchasing was done. Okay, so if I just highlight how the purchasing was done, that's really the only part that is necessary for the code of purchasing. So I'm just going to do that. And then later it will show it in context. So I'll show you that in a, in a second. Now, from a teacher's point of view, it matters because when I'm in the classroom, it's important to have some control over what technology is being purchased. Okay, so I could code this as purchasing, but this is really about control. And so I'm going to just make a new code called control. And again, when I see these all pulled in their uh, separate codes, I might combine if a lot of control and a lot of policy goes together, I might make that connection when it comes to the analysis. But for now, I'm just keeping it as close to the data as I can. Uh, from a teacher's perspective, I was excited about school divisions where I could see through their policies that they were giving teachers some decision-making power. Okay, so again, this is um, about policy, but it's also about control. And so I might want to code it as both. So I will click policy and control. Now to highlight both, you just you hold your control button on your keyboard and you'll be able to highlight both or you can go in separately and do both. It will work. Now what it shows me here on the side is that in this highlighted version, in this highlighted sentence, I have two colors. I have pink for policy and I have blue for control. And so you can see that there's both. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you this way. Uh, these are my nodes and you can see I've got four references for a policy two references for control, two references for purchasing. And let's say that I've gone through and I've done 10 different transcripts, I have hundreds of references, and I'm at the point now where I want to begin analysis. I'm going to double click on policy, and you can see that it pulls all of the things that I have. I'll just zoom in so you can see it better. It's going to pull all of the things that I've highlighted and show me them all at a glance. So here we've got uh, one quote, I'll scroll down, it shows me uh, the reference, and it's got the second, here's the third reference, it's got the third, etc. You can see at a glance all of the different quotations relating to that code. And that's really handy when it comes to the analysis, rather than having to try to search through a big document to find those quotes. It's also handy because when it comes to the analysis, you're going to start making a different schema or a different way of organizing your data that shows new connections or shows new findings that you've that you've arrived at based on what's in your codes. And so it, it allows you to do that very quickly. There are other things you can do with codes. You can classify, you can create con connections or maps, and um, there's a lot you can do in, in vivo. But this is the basics of how to get started with coding.